Hello everyone, welcome. I am Linda Israel and thank you so very much for coming to my live stream here on YouTube. I greatly appreciate your support and for taking the time to come here and hang out. There are a few things that I want to go over before the actual live started, so this is a recording. First of all, I want to make sure that you like this video and subscribe, so give it a thumbs up. I greatly appreciate that. When you subscribe, make sure you hit that notification bell up in the corner. That way you'll get a notification whenever I upload a video, I have a, a broadcast post or even a live stream. If you're watching this video as a replay and you're on a computer, look for the little gear at the bottom. You can change the speed to speed it up. Or if you're on a mobile device, look for the little three dots and usually you can change the playback speed there. My live streams generally last about two hours. They can go as long as three hours. It kind of depends on what we're working on that day and how the feedback is in the chat. While you're watching, you earn junk bucks. So if you are here in order to get those junk bucks accumulating go ahead and type hello in the chat and my little bot junkie joe will see you and then you'll start accruing junk bucks and you're wondering well what do i do with those junk bucks well you can accumulate those and once you have two thousand of them you can type exclamation point award and you can redeem them for a ten dollar off coupon to my shop you can earn junk bucks while you're here and when you are chatting, as well as when you play the in-chat game. So look for those as they come up and if you make a donation. For those of you that make a donation during my live stream, make sure that you go over to my website at lindaisrael.com and if you haven't already done so, create a user account. When you make a donation during my live stream, basically you're buying a membership to my website and to the live stream. In my opinion, what we're doing is you're accumulating that money in my account. Thank you for that donation. And as a reward, you will get 5% off your orders at lindaisrael.com. And during the live stream, if I have a journal that I'm giving away at the very end, you are eligible to win that journal. Anybody that makes a donation gets into that drawing by manually uh, typing in the raffle at the end, but then you also get the discount membership on my website. Thank you to Robin, who is my administrator during the live stream. She helps me out with answering questions as well as giving information. She is also my administrator over at the Friendly Junk Journal People Facebook group. If you haven't joined that group, please do. We'd love to have you over there. You're welcome to share what you're working on. Speaking of sharing, during the live today, you can speak up in the chat and say, hey, I have a YouTube channel. You will not be able to share your link to your channel, but you can at least say, hey, my name is and this is what I do. And then your friends that come into the chat can follow each other. Let's keep the chat upbeat, friendly and helpful. If you will be kind to those that are here, if you have a question, put it in all caps and I'll do my best to answer those. The chat sometimes goes pretty fast. So I don't always see it so do ask again and at the same time if you're in the chat and you know the answer to somebody's question please speak up and give them the answer check the description box for links to products that I share today yes I am an Amazon affiliate which means I do get a commission on items that you purchase through my link if you're gonna buy something anyway I greatly appreciate it it does not cost you any extra it just gives me a little bit of a commission which helps me buy products to show you here if you win one of the raffles you can start right now now by typing exclamation point raffle do make sure that you go over to my website and if you haven't already created a user account that way I will have your contact information so I can send you your prize I am starting a raffle right now that is for 200 junk bucks so you can get well on your way to accumulating your junk bucks let's have some fun today and let's get started thanks everybody for being here
Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I, yeah, can you see my um, embellishment? You probably can't see because it's so dark behind it. Here, let's see if you can see it a little better. I got this from uh, Jennifer. We had lunch on Friday last week, and she had been shopping at a place that has some... Uh, uh, discounted items from projects at Hobby Lobby and she bought this for me so I feel so special so I thought I'd wear my tiara for you today <laughs> so glad you're here 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 welcome 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 I see uh Jennifer Julie Margie and Robin I think I see create let's see creating in the waiting I don't know who that is but Raven is here welcome 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 so if you're here a Tamara is here welcome so glad you made it hey if you will if you're new especially or if you're just lurking at least say hello it's okay if you don't chat the entire time but we love to know that you are here so welcome 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 how is everybody I hope you're well I hope you've had an amazing week Week. It's been a busy week for us. Of course, it always is, it seems like, but so glad to have you here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> so let's see. Um, I thought today I would do something with envelopes, whether it be altering envelopes that you get in the junk mail or making envelopes from scrap. I know that several of us like to use envelopes in our journals to hold items. You have your pizza and you're watching. All right, good job, Tamara. <laughs> hey, Amanda Dawn, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, so it kind of depends on how you want to use your envelopes and what sources that you have for them. Many of us have junk mail envelopes that come in the mail. I don't save them. In fact, these I think were saved for me, and which is funny. The date on this one says May 9th, 2011. I found this in a stash of envelopes that apparently I had gotten way back then. <laughs> so I, I have a few. I also have some greeting card envelopes. Looks like these are some envelopes that we got when we were in Las Vegas at the New York, New York. So I've got a variety here. And then I've made a few envelopes. Uh, I've got an envelope punch board. So this was an envelope that I made using the punch board. This was a piece of scrap. And so I turned it into an envelope. And then here is a way that I turned that into an envelope by using a book page. This was a, a chill print that I made and I use a square. Here's another one of those um, punch board and I had some pretty decorative paper but it was really thin so I glued book pages on the back side of it and here is a piece of Norella's uh, digitals and one of my digitals that I glued back to back. It was basically text weight paper and I think I glued it shut. I did. All right we got it. It's okay. We'll survive. Um, I glued them back to back and that made them a nice thick envelope. Now, of course, these are going to cost more if you want to mail them due to the thickness and size and weight, but they still can be mailed. And this one is a gel print started as a square and I just kind of make a little cross hatch and fold those over. Here's another that was out of scrapbook cardstock that I had that was two sided. I had a little scrap of it. Um, here is one of my mixed media papers, and I even lined the flap with another piece. And then here's one that's a book page that I made. So we've got a variety here. Let's keep going. What else do I got? I'm trying to put them back in this little bin. This one was an envelope that I covered with paper, and then I cut it to be smaller. So it started out, I think it started out this way. It started out like this and I cut it and then I added this piece to make a flap and I added a piece across the bottom because it was open on one end and then this became an envelope so you can see the security on the inside of it and then here is the other piece that has an opening at the top and the back has been decorated. So this could be paper clipped in. You could add stuff to it. You could glue it down if you so choose. This one I collaged on the front with some book page. The envelope had been opened down the side. Some of these were 
envelopes that I got when I used to work for an insurance company. And so I ended up just kind of covering the inside and the outside. This could be a great tuck spot. We could glue this down where it could be a pocket on the back as well as a pocket in here. And then you've got that pretty window there. Um, here's another one where I had a scrap of paper and I just folded it to be like a tall, skinny coin envelope. You can kind of see down in there some book page that I use. Uh, another punch card. Punch, 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 punch. I was playing with that. This one was just using a book page and I folded it so that we could have an envelope made out of that. I have a tutorial on this one, and this is where I made a faux seed packet. So it was using a gel print on the back, a book page on the front, and it has a gusset in it so you can put a full-size journal card on the inside and has an altered paper clip on there. Thank you, Margie, for your uh, support. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You have me on your big screen, Mar uh, <laughs> Jennifer, awesome. Yes, queen of the day. <laughs> so those are just a few ideas. Um, I don't know where I want to start first. Since this is on my desk, we're going to start here. So here's what I did. I took some scraps, and I do this quite frequently, so I'll get a bigger piece just to show you. I took a book page, in this case it was some junk that I had in my stash, and I covered it with scraps of papers that I had in my stash. Here's a bigger one that I made. I just glued them down all over onto this paper that was looks like this one may have been a printer sample because you can kind of see some of the printing on the inside. And then I went ahead and cut it to be an exact square because of the punch board that I have. I have this punch board. Mine's older. The newer ones are white and teal, and this one is gray. I got this years ago. I mean years ago, back when Tuesday morning was still open here in our area. Uh, of course, they've since closed because, you know, the pandemic kind of took out a bunch of people. Okay, why well, can't get that out? Um, but I have a, I think it's a five, let me get my ruler. It's a five and a half inch square, and I just glued on the back side because these were random papers. I glued one of Norella's digitals. I happened to have uh, a couple of pieces left on my desk, and so I thought, well, I'll just glue those together. And then the thing is, you come in here and you look for the size of paper slash what size of envelope you want to make. In my case, since I've already cut it to five by five, I look for the five and a half by five and a half. I look for that on here and then I go down and it says to score at the two and three eighths. And here's the thing. I can't see that very well. So I get my other glasses. And so I'll go, yes, two and three eighths. This is when you need the measurement is the first time. I want this to be the outside, so I'm going to flip it over, and then I'm going to put it back up here. Okay, where is that again? Two and three eighths, which is right there. And then you line it up, and you punch it. Then you use your score tool that comes with it, and you put it in the channel, and score. Okay. Then you rotate this around and line it up with this being with the uh, little leg sticking out here. Punch it again. Come over here and score it. Then rotate it around. Go into the area. Use that little leg. Score it again. Punch that. Almost forgot. And then we're going to go to the last one, and I'll just kind of make a little bit of an adjustment and punch that, and then score. Okay, so now we've got this envelope template. Now if you want, you can come in here and punch round off the corner. So this is a good tool to have if you don't have a corner rounder and you kind of want a multi-use tool. Well, this this 
punch board, although I haven't used mine as much as I could have because I have other tools, is a great way to have a quarter rounder make the uh, envelopes. And if you watch some tutorials, there's several tutorials that show you how to make uh, tabs to put in your journals, to make a file folder looking tab. There's really some neat things out there. I think I'm going to go ahead and fold. Yeah, I'll round it. I'll just round this one. It does have a little bit of trash that comes out, so I'll just take that and throw it away. I've gone ahead and added a little bit of distressing to the edges, but I'm just going to come back in where I cut it with the punch. So how is everybody? Have y'all been good? I've been, been staying busy uh, working and... This weekend we didn't do a whole lot. I don't know why I'm going all the way around. I don't need to. Uh, we stayed home and relaxed a little bit. In fact, um, we had talked about going out on Saturday night and we changed our mind. And Henry and I both, and we like to go to the casino because it's fun. But we have casino apps for free on our iPads. And so what we did Saturday night was we played on our iPads on the casino, like we were at a casino, you know, we were showing them, we got the free spins, I had it up on my big screen TV, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> All right, I think what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and glue this shut. I'm going to leave this top part up. You can fold that over or cut it off. Some people will cut it straight across. I don't know. I kind of like the way it looks that way. So I'm going to add a little bit of glue on either side here, right where the sides and the flaps are. That way it'll have a nice adhesion. So I put a little bit right here. And then right across there, I'm just using a lean tacky glue. And I'm just going to lay that on top and give that a second. All right. Been thrift store shopping. I haven't been to a thrift store in a while. I don't really need anything. I was going to go to the, uh, where was I going to go? I was going to go to Hobby Lobby or, and Joanne's Crafts the other day, but I never left the house. <laughs> You got your mother-in-law's apartment empty and brought three chickens. Why did you buy chickens? <laughs> Thrift stores going out of business. Oh, wow. They, maybe they have some good buys there, right? What were you doing, chickens? <laughs> hey, um, Jennifer, when you decide that you no longer want them, I have a friend. She has two chicken coops, and she'll be more than happy to take those babies for you because you're going to find out that they're a lot more work than you think. <laughs> yes, live chickens. Jennifer got live chickens. All right, so that is how to use this punch board. I don't think you need to see me do that several times, do you? But isn't that cute, that little envelope? Can you imagine putting that into your journal? Of course, if you're one that really likes the look of vintage, like this one, so you can make it a nice vintage looking envelope as well. I just lined it with some of Norella's papers, which are actually a image that I had drawn for stencils. And so she used that to make the images. You grew up, I see, I grew up with chickens too. Yeah, I grew up with chickens too. All right, let's get this out of the way. And I don't need the punch board. I think one's enough, right? <laughs> hey, Beverly, thank you so much for your support. Hello and welcome. So I'm glad to have you here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I tried to figure out how to get the notifications to work. I couldn't get it to work today. I kept playing with it. I redid some stuff. If you noticed, I actually changed the screen so it's a little bit uh, more of a zoom in on here. So uh, anyhow, there are a lot of work. You named them Caroline, Harriet, and El Eliza Jane. <laughs> so she gave them names. <laughs> okay, so I thought... What we would do first is I'm going to try to find an envelope here that, I don't know, maybe that one. It's got, see if there's one that's better. I, I have different ideas, okay? So I have um, a book page here. 
have a couple of them. I was going to add some distressed ink to them, but I never did that part. So I'm going to do that real fast on a couple of the edges. My thought was, let's just cover the envelope with other paper. So you can cover it with scrapbook paper and book pages. I've got some gel prints that I may get out here in a minute and we may do some of those, but I thought to start with, let's just get a couple of book pages. I think I have some sheet music I'm going to grab that I've already I cut some to a smaller piece. I think I see that, but I'm not positive. I may have already used them all. <laughs> okay. Hey, Beverly. So glad to have you here. Hi. My, fresh eggs are good. I, my friend, of course, now she has fewer chickens, so her chickens aren't laying as much as they used to, but I would get my hair cut. She was my, she is my hair stylist. And every time I would get my hair cut, she would usually give me an 18 pack or a dozen eggs. And the last time, because I always saved all my egg cartons for her. Do you want me to save the egg cartons for you, Jennifer? <laughs> um, I saved the egg cartons for her and she would give me some eggs. Well, last time I took her like a whole stack of egg cartons and she says, I don't need any more egg cartons. I have plenty. So apparently... I wasn't the only one giving them to her. I'm just grabbing. I've got some book pages here. I usually keep them in this little thing so I can find them. All right, so I've got some book pages. And my thought was I would basically just kind of decorate the envelope with book pages. Now, these I've already kind of gone around the edges and whatnot. So let's just do this. Oh, I like that one. All right, let's do this. Let's kind of, if I glue that up here and then just kind of cover the whole thing. I'm not going to worry about, except leaving that open. This side of the envelope isn't closed all the way. So I think what I'm going to do is glue everything that's loose back down. I'm just adding a little bit more distress to this piece. It's very fragile. So this will be great for those old, old book pages that are falling apart that you can't really use them as they are. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of add some glue there. Let's see if this side is loose. This is from when I worked at uh, Oklahoma Farm Bureau, I think, and several of the envelopes were saved while I was there. All right, so I think what I'm gonna do is start here and I was trying to decide if I want this on the left or that on the left. I think I'm going to cut this across. So let's go this way. All right. I wasn't going to, but I think I'm going to do it this way. And I'm okay with the uh, border on this particular one because it's such a cool paper. So we're going to glue this one down. I am using... Aline's tacky glue. You can use glue stick for this if that's what you prefer. I'm usually pretty good about not putting too heavy handed of an amount of glue so that when I stick my papers down, they don't buckle up on me. I'm trying to get that straight. And I'm trying to be very gentle in gluing this and manipulating it because it rips so easy. Little glue right there. Okay. And I think I'm going to go ahead and just fold this over to the back side, which will close the envelope because I'm going to cut it any in the future. And, I'm, and that's, you know, any time now, right? Future. Um, I'm going to cut it. And it won't matter that I had glued over this piece. All right, we got that one. I've got some bigger pieces here, so let's see. I've got this one. How about if we were to put that kind of going over the, we'll, we'll line it up on that side and go he, over here. And I'm just trying to cover up part of this envelope. 
Yep, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna put it right here, across. And I'll just kind of dip that in there, line that up, smooth that out. I will cut off this excess on this side because I don't need to fold it over. I was going to ask you, Jennifer, did you say what kind of uh, chickens that you get? All right, so that one. And then I'm just going to fold this part over again, which will close my envelope. I had a, we, we had Yokohama chickens, which lay green eggs. And we had Rhode Island reds, which are red chickens because they were bigger the yokohamas had really pretty feathers and then the reds were just bigger chickens that my dad liked to butcher and then there was a time when we had they were all white i don't remember a leghorn i think it's a leghorn chicken so we had extra crispy recipe <laughs> um, so you know i was raised with chickens so here's my horror story about chickens um we had a rhode island red rooster that we have had for a while now and it was my duty every day to go out and feed the chickens so and the rabbits those were closer to our back door well this rooster had decided that he was the boss and i wasn't allowed to go out the back door and do my chores so i would tell my dad that this chicken keeps attacking me so he said to me put on your boots and when that rooster comes at you you turn around and you kick the caca out of him <laughs> This was my dad's solution. Okay. So I go out and that chicken's coming at me. That rooster's coming at me. And so I put on my boots that day and I just start kicking at him. And he, he kind of flies up away when you go to try to kick at him. And he goes away and the next day he comes at me again. And I kicked him some more. And I was like, get away from me, you dumb bird. Because he'll get you. Uh, if you didn't know roosters especially they have a spur on the back of their feet and what they'll do is they'll fly up and then they'll rake that onto you and i had holes in my pants i had scratches from him doing that to me so this bird was not very kind so i kicked the bird and i kicked the bird and i just put that down upside down i put the kick the bird and kick the bird and kick the bird and the next day I go out and I found the bird. He was laying on his side and he was still alive, but not going to be much longer for this world. And then my dad came home and saw that it was dying and he finished it off. <laughs> so chickens can be brutal. To say the least. All right, I think if I can put this piece here. I'm just kind of covering the whole front of this. I can't decide if I want to go ahead and cover the whole back. You know, I'm kind of feeling maybe I should just do that so that the whole thing is covered. So I'm going to fold this over like that. Chicken for dinner. But yeah, we had mom always loved geese and ducks, and the geese were always her favorite friends. They would follow her everywhere she went, and uh, they were great watch dogs. They would start honking, honk, 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 whenever they were in the yard and somebody you know drove up. She had a turkey that she raised from an egg, and it loved her. 
it loved her so much that my mom dropped something and she bent over to pick it up and the bird jumped up on her back. <laughs> All the stories about chickens. I think here's one. That almost covers the whole thing. So what we'll do is I got a little strip here. I'll put that down right there. Mm -hmm. Birds. Birds are silly. Geese are loud. Yeah. Is Junkie the show not working? Because he was. Oh, I'm sorry. If you did a donation, thank you so very much for your donation. Um, for some reason, he's not um, doing the notifications. I tried to do one. Let me see what happens. No, it didn't work. So I don't know why. Yeah, they're loud and obnoxious. Are you all able to do... Any of the functions? Okay, good. That Junkie Joe's working on he's just not doing the uh, dancing sheep. All right, I think if I put that there, I need another little piece right here. I've got another little scrap. Is that one big enough? No, nope, that one's not, but this one is. Let me see. Yeah, let's do that. I'm just going to fold it over so it gets a different texture on there. All right, now this piece can go right into that corner and cover the whole thing. All righty. All right, so just using book pages, I've now covered an envelope, front and back. I still left the opening of where the window is. So if we wanted to, we could have this on this side and cut this off and we'll have the pocket over here. And um, we could make this a pocket that goes this way. So what do we want to do today? I think I'm going to cut this make two pockets out of it. Denied! Jun Junkie Joe does not play today. <laughs> Alright, I need to get something to drink. Alright. I think I'm going to cut this off. What is that going to make that? If I do that at six inches, I get a pretty deep pocket out of this side but if I go let's see here if I make that seven inches that makes a good size pocket on this side and I can put over a maybe I'll add some more paper to this so this can be a top load now we'll just leave it like that it'll be a top load envelope here and when I glue it down it's going to be a tuck spot I wasn't going to but I think I am All right, I know y'all like to do the thumb holes. I don't always do the thumb holes. So do we want the thumb hole to appear all the way through the envelope, front and back? Or do we want it where it's only going to divot out this front piece? I think we'll do the front piece. If I can get the punch in there. I'm trying to get it lined up. And like that. Oh, well, see, now you can see that that's plain envelope in there. So what if I do this? I put That'll work. I'll just put this down. Got a little piece of book page. I'll just glue it on the inside. So this one does not remain an envelope. It becomes a pocket. Okay, I like that. And now we'll just add some distress. Junkie Joe's got bird flu. <laughs> oh, dear. 
All right, so I'm just adding some distress inks on there. And I think what we'll do is we'll, I'll end up gluing that into my journal so I can add something on the front to decorate it. I know I have, what I do with them? There they are. These are some of my watercolor flowers. So I could put a little bit of that on the front here and maybe a label. Where's my labels? So I have all these. I I did some fussy cutting. So I rubber stamped the this is the little daisy and this is the geranium. And then I used my watercolor paints and watercolored them and then fussy cut them out. I did the same with some dragonflies. And I have an abundance of scraps of paper. So what I did was I took my label punches. I got these two sizes and I stamped them on different colors of paper that I had in my stash. So do we want to do, let's do maybe a purple label. Do I want the big one or the little one? Let's get the big one out. I did that on here and then I also did I put them in here no I put them over here I stamped a bunch of words because I was running really low on words so I stamped them I had some scraps of paper that when it went through my printer it didn't work really well I don't know if you can see there's a pattern on there so I just cut them into strips and then stamped words on them. So I think we'll use Inspire today. So let me pick that one up. Inspire. Maybe we need a little piece of fabric behind there. I'm going to go ahead and put these in here. Okay. Let's get my little tub. I've been, been using this little candy jar that I got at the dollar store, um, Dollar Tree, which I just heard today they're going to go up again to a dollar fifty on their items. That's kind of sad and scary. All right, do we want to do that? Maybe. Oh, I've got a piece of purple here. So what if I were to just cut a couple of pieces of fabric? I'm talking to myself here. All right, let's just do this. So I'm going to make this piece just slightly larger than the word. And I think I'm going to change my mind about the fabric behind because we got a little bit of teal here. I have this little teal piece. So what if we were to put that as little layers right there in the corner. I think I like that. All right. I'm going to cut this piece. Put that back in the bin. All right. So now what I'm going to do is glue this piece right up here at the top but kind of hanging off. Okay. And then I'll glue these two pieces together. Just a little bit. Yeah, they're growing. Bigger tree prices, exactly. Well, I watched a video today of a gal who said that the reason they were changing the prices was because their current clientele has more money that they can spend there. I'm paraphrasing, but that's pretty much what they said was we know they have more money and we're trying to get it so we're going to up our prices um so i know that there's going to be a lot of people that are hurt by this because they went there because the prices were so low and then we've got a different class of people that just went there because it was so cheap and they just like saving you know money even though they could 
in theory, they are the ones that could afford to go to the bigger box stores. I don't know, as it keeps going, more and more stores are shutting down their physical locations and more and more people are going to have to move to internet buying. All right, what do you think? The purple label there? Or should I have changed that and put down, I kind of have a teal and I have a pink. I don't know if I want the pink. Let's see what this one looks like. Money grab! I think I like that better. I think the teal looks better. So, you know, it's sad. I And here's what I'll tell you. There's not a whole heck of a lot you can do about it other than frequent the stores that they seem to care about their consumer. If they seem to offer you the product and services that you use and desire, then frequent them. Um, just because something is cheaper doesn't always mean it's better. So always do your research before you make a purchase or, you know, buy into a way of thinking about how you purchase your stuff. Um, I will say this publicly, do not buy from Timu because they are basically crooks, okay? There's uh, so many things that they do against creators that is not even funny. I don't care if it is cheaper. You're not helping anybody by buying them and it's selfish <laughs> to put other people out of business because of uh, you wanting to buy something for... 20 cents less than you could get it from the, you know, actual designer. Okay. What do you think? That's kind of cool, isn't it? And I think some of my journal cards, maybe not, but we'll see. These were some cards I made a while back and looky there. That will fit. And that actually looks kind of cute. So it's ready to go. So that was using the bottom of the envelope. Now, if I want, I could mount this all the way down. I could stick it into another pocket. Maybe you have some small things you want to stick in here so that they don't get lost in a larger pocket. Or I could use corners to mount that in my journal. I think I like the way that turned out. Okay, so let's see. We have a tall skinny here. And I just happen to have this card already so i'm going to do this so that that will fit in there it's kind of plain here so maybe what we'll do is let's add some more paper to that and maybe kind of make a little notepad let's see i have i have this is one of my um mixed media pages that i put together to make um, out of book pages. God, I can't get my words out. And what I did was I scanned them in. So the originals, I think I still have some of those originals. Maybe not. I may have used them all. Uh, they were on book pages and I scanned them in and then I did a little digital collage with them. So I have some of my own papers, but you could also definitely use uh, papers that you make yourself. So I think I'll, I'll include one of these. So look at there. If I put this like that on there, and I've changed my mind about that one. Let's look at, oh, I know what I have. I have some pre-cut papers that I've had for a really, really long time. And here's some pink. So let's get one two of those. I want to have a blue. So that'll be good. We'll have... I'm so glad that I've almost got this done behind me. I started it in January and I've got one, two, three, four, five rows completed. I'm still working on organizing and then I've got to put together some more of the boxes. But I'm really liking how this is coming together because I'm actually able to find things faster. Yes, I knew in a general area where stuff was, but since I've been working on this, it's making it a lot easier. It's also making me redo 
what is around me right here. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out a better way for some of the things that I want to be able to have quick access to. But at the same time, I need flat, empty surface whenever I'm streaming. So if you guys have suggestions, um, I'll take some pictures of this and, and send them to you. Uh, I'm trying to figure out a better way. <laughs> So I got these papers. Are they too wide? They're a little wider, but I don't know. Do I want to do those? And what I might do is attach them here at the top, but cut them off even so that it actually sticks out at the top a little bit. Is that enough papers? Do I, do I need to get some more? Maybe I'll get some. Um, I have some that are tattered angel looking. Oh, I like this one. That'll work. Already had one cut. I just love it when that happens. It's like perfect. I might cut a piece of that. Here's another. So we're just going to make a notepad. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want these to be narrower than the um, cardstock piece. So that is three and three quarters of an inch wide. So I'm just stacking these all up and I'll cut that. And then I want these to be, let me move my, I still, I still got to figure out some things in here and I don't want to get rid of anything. All right. So this is going to be at least if I make that, um, let's make it seven inches tall. But, you know, as you work, you, you figure out what is best and what you can use. I don't know. So we're going to do three and three quarters inches by seven. I may just fold this one over. And then I saw a little piece here and I thought, well, why don't I just cut it? There. So I end up with a, a little scrap, but I have another little piece that looks kind of cool. I don't know, something like that. Maybe this one needs to be, um, let's do it three and a half inches wide because it's a little bit narrower. And then cut that at seven. Actually, let's do six and three quarters. And this piece I'll put here. So basically I've just kind of made a little flip of different ones. Does that look kind of cool? Oh my gosh, don't let me down, Junkie Joe! There is no better way, Robin says. Yeah, I understand. You like all those papers? Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to glue these down with just a quick bead of glue right where I want them so they'll stay in place. Because I wanted to have this is going to cause my notebook to be a little bit taller because I did some of them longer. You know, I think I'm going to cut a book page just to cut it. So let's make that three, three and a, just over three and a half, I guess. And then we'll make that seven inches. Uh, 
I think we are, Jennifer. I think we are supposed to be under a tornado warning. All right, so I'm going to glue this one up here. Glue that in. All right, and then let's put um, this blue down. Because we have to have bright colors, right? Now, if you are someone that likes to coffee dye or tea dye papers, it's a fun way to take these really bright papers and kind of darken them a little bit to make them that vintage grungy look. I think it's really cool. I haven't really done any because it's not really what I prefer because I like the bright colors. So I don't want to grungy them up too much. If that makes any sense. All right, I think, yeah, let's go like this. So I'm just gluing these down in order. Oh, let's go over to the sewing machine. So get the sewing lamb, sewing lamb. Come here, little sewing lamb. Thank you, Giovanna, for the sewing lamb. We're going to stitch across here. Maybe we'll add a piece of fabric as well. Might as well, right? I probably should have cut this apart, but I think I like the idea of leaving it um, like this in here. So I'm just going to line that up again. Make it straight. Well, see, Henry said that the weather was supposed to start at 345 today. That we were supposed to get rain and possible tornadoes. I got all that on my phone this morning. I hate that that covers that up, but I think it's okay. We're just gonna we're just gonna do it. All right, so I'm just gonna line this one up, kind of in the middle. All right, so in theory, this should now fit in here because we made it okay so it sticks up because I made it a little bit taller we could also because of the way I made this um, backing we could put it where it's on the outside of this envelope if you want I thought that was kind of interesting I think I'm gonna get a piece of fabric so get my bin back I have a, I have this purple, and it just kind of uh, peters out into hardly anything. So I think what I'll do, do I want to kind of just layer that? I think I want one more piece of fabric. I see something darker. It's a little bit more of that vintage look. But what I could do is layer those. But I think I want a different color. Okay, so here I got another one of these little scrappy pieces. So I'm thinking that I just kind of put down these little pieces. All right, I'll put a little bit of glue here. I'm just talking to myself. You don't worry about it, okay? <laughs> Oh my goodness. I'm just kind of layering this on here. So I got that little piece. So it's got some little sticky outies. Sticky outies, little ruffles, little bits. I need to um, coffee dye some cheesecloth. <laughs> I said it. Cheesecloth. I thought I had some, but I may have used it already. I'm digging through my little bin. I need some cheesecloth, y'all. Apparently, I don't have any in here. Well, poo. Oh, look. I do have some in this green. <laughs> I kind of like it. <sighs> ah. Okay, so I'm going to put that across. And then I have some of this purple. All right, so I'm putting another little dollop of glue on here just to kind of help hold it together while I get it to the sewing machine. And then we're going to put this down. Okay. I'll let that piece kind of flop off over here on the side. 
Okay. See, I kind of covered up that cheesecloth. And on the screen, on my screen, because I think my television, I need a new television. Um, the colors aren't very good. But this is a bright spring green. I think that looked good. Okay. We are where the tornadoes come ripping down the plane. Okay. So, I did all that. So, I'm going to stitch this right across here. Okay? In Jesus' name, we do not want a tornado in Oklahoma today. All right. I think I got my machine over here. We're in picture. We're in picture. Can you see my... My pretty feathers. <laughs> and I'm just going to stitch across here. We've glued each layer together. And you wouldn't have to stitch this if you did a good job of gluing everything down. You do want to make sure that that glue is dry before you start stitching on it. I'm pushing the envelope. Huh? See, we're working on envelopes today. A, a little bit by trying to sew over it this soon after gluing all those layers down. But we're, we'll see. We hope it'll work without any issue. Um, I'm using zigzag stitch. I've got it with black thread in the top and the bottom and a regular needle. I highly recommend that whatever machine you have, that you find the user, user's manual for it and go through the machine and learn how to do all the stitches. Uh, something that Robin did a while back, I found them again today and I need to make some myself. She did stitch pattern tests on some coffee dyed paper. I'll put them over here and we'll, we'll look at them better in the other camera. Um, I mean, that's a great way to learn about your machine, okay? If you have one or if you want to get one. And I, if you need recommendations, definitely uh, message me and I can help you with that. I highly recommend that you just go buy one, an old machine that's all metal. That's probably from the 70s or the 80s <laughs> to start with. All right, so I'm just going to do a zigzag stitch across the top here. Yeah, it's going. Okay, good. It's got lots of layers. And I think I caught most of all of the pieces. So that's just adding that little stitch of detail. Move it out of the way. See, see these that Robin made. I just love these and I need to sit down. First I need to just tear some coffee dyed paper and then get out my different colors of thread that I have and stitch on these because aren't these fun i think that i might like doing some of my not just coffee dyed paper but my tattered angels dyed paper that are different colors and then doing the black or another color contrasting color on them weren't that cool okay all right let's clean some of this off my desk Come over here. I keep moving that guy. All right. So this is going to go down inside. If I can get it open. Here we go. So that's going to go down inside. So that kind of makes it pretty here. But we can layer some stuff over the top of this so that we get some neat layers. I wonder, do I have some other stamped images? that I might like to use. I have one of these. That's kind of cool. Where we can still see. I think that'll work. You like it? I've got this rose, but it's really big. And I don't know that I want to cover that up. I, mean, I can move it over a little bit. But I think I like this one better. Or I could put that on here. Okay. I have some butterflies too. What if I did a... I'll go that way. A little butterfly. Like that. I'm changing my composition around. You know, you gotta, you gotta make it work, right? Now, do we want to put a 
word or phrase up here or do we want to put it down on this area? I could also get out a little label since we got maybe a purple label since we, I was trying to use one earlier and didn't get to. So maybe something like that. I don't know why, but for some reason I felt like it needed to go right there. Because <laughs> that's I guess because of that uh, tear. Um, I could look at the fabric here. I'm in the zone, y'all. I'm in the zone. Oh, I have this little tiny piece of fabric. Do I want to do it that way or this way? Like that. Do we need one more piece of something? Oh, here's a little tiny piece of lace. So if we did that, and then this, and then this, that kind of gives us a little decoration there, doesn't it? Okay. You like the flower where it is in the corner like that? Kind of draw your eye up this way. So. Mm -hmm. I don't know how big of a phrase that we want. I've got, don't forget to fly. Maybe something like that. Because I don't, I don't know if I want it down here. Because I feel it, it's more related to the butterfly. So I think there. Okay. And it doesn't cover up too much of the window. You like that? All right. Those over here. All right. Let's let's glue. Let's glue it down. So I put a little glue here and here. So I used some scraps of fabric. I've used some book pages and then I've added in rubber stamped images that I fussy cut out. I mean, we've got my words, so I'll be able to, I like rubber stamps for this reason. I can create the same composition, but in multiple different colors using the same rubber stamps over and over and over. And they'll all look similar, but different. But it comes in handy if you're mass making something, because then you can sit down and just put them all together. So if you've got a bunch of journals you need to make for a project, it's quicker to do it that way. Some people like to do it one at a time, and that's perfectly fine as well. Just pick up what you have. I like having my little rubber stamp sessions where I will fussy cut, stamp, fussy cut, watercolor, whatever it is to rubber stamped images. And that way I have a, a little bit of a supply that I can pull from. And then sometimes I like to make it on the go, right? In the moment, because I want a particular color. Okay, I like that. All right, yep, we're gonna do this. I'm gonna get my fabric tack. You don't fly, you can consistently crash in things. <laughs> you don't have wings, I hope you don't forget to fly. <laughs> oh dear. <sighs> People are funny. All right, I think I got a good I want to glue Put that right there. Okay. All right. Now, now we don't fly away today. We will. Uh, if we have a tornado, <laughs> you may not get a choice. <laughs> look how I like that. Isn't that pretty? Did that, does that look like something that's kind of cool? Let's see what happens. I've got a, uh, let's just pretend that we've got a journal page here. So this can be glued onto the page. It could be paper clipped onto the cage. 
page, not cage. Um, you could decorate the back. You could definitely put a piece of paper over the back and put this inside of another pocket. And then this piece can be glued directly onto the page. Let me go on the other side. There's a little bit different look. So look at this with the vintage over the mixed media page. I would put this on as a hinge like that. That way you get all of those pieces and you get to see this over here because otherwise you cover it up. All right, I'm going to paper the clip this together. Or do you want me to go ahead and put it together? Do you want me to go ahead and make this as a page? Or just do the examples? I kind of like the way that looks. And I think I've got, these are those, um, what do I call those? Those are the envelope, the file folders. I kind of like that. I have the ones that I've already made. So if I were to go, let's look at this one. The contrast of the pink. And I think if I put uh, gussets on the back of this, I can make this a double pocket. What do you think? I kind of like that. All right, let's put that over here. Trying to see if y'all are saying, do you want me to go ahead and mount it or keep making different envelope ideas? Ugh. I think that would look good there. I'm going to paper clip it there. This will be kind of a start of a page. I think in this one, I'm going to hinge. All right. So that gives me something to put on those. So that's kind of vintage-y looking, isn't it? Um, and that's upcycling an envelope. So I think what I want to do now is I want to make an envelope that I can then put one of the other made envelopes in. Does that make sense? So I have one of these envelopes. So what I want to do is make something that I can put this in. So I think what I want to do is if I take one of the other envelopes and cover it with something, then I can make a pocket out of here. Now, do I want to do something that I know what I'll do. I want to make one that looks like a, a corner tuck spot. Then I can choose different sizes of envelopes to go into it. I think so. Okay. So again, I'm going to cover this envelope, but this time I think I want to use some of my decorative papers. And since this one is already kind of collaged together and to save time, I think I'm just going to glue this down uh, all over this particular one and then fill in where I need to. So first thing I'm going to do is I think I'm going to cut this to where, let me see how this envelope is opened. Okay, so I'm going to glue this shut all the way. And glue this one. Okay, and then I'm going to cut this paper because it's too narrow that way. Yeah, cut that paper to be the same height as my envelope. I could make it a little bit longer because I am going to cut off probably one end. So I don't want it to be too um, oversized. So I just want to cut this off. All right, so I got that piece. Ends up with a little bit of a scrap. So I think what I want to do is glue this down fold this over and glue that down and I was going to leave it to where you could see the envelope opening opening should I cover it up or make it an opening y'all can tell me real fast while I get my distress inks out an envelope in an envelope yes okay So 
So cover up the window or collage around it so we can see the inside. <laughs> okay. Let me see what else I have here, paper-wise. <laughs> oh, I have these pieces. So I've got some bright colored pieces here we could use too. All right, so I think I'm going to do is, I was going to cover the whole thing, but I think what I'm going to do instead is put some right down here. And I think I'm going to alter the color of the envelope because when I cover that all up, it looks, um, oh, should you say cover, cover it over? I was just thinking I could change the color of this, but I think I'm going to go ahead and cover it up. Something pretty. Okay. Margie says to leave it. So you know what? It's easier to leave it than it is to cover it up. If I don't like it, we'll cover it up. Right? So I'm going to go here and here. I think that's what I'll do. Is I will add some color. I should have done that before I glued this down, but I think we can make it work. Oh, I got glue on it. All right, so I'm going to add some color in this area here just so that it's not so stark white. So let's see. It looks like I used a lot of the teal colors because that's part of my favorite colors. And so I'm going to get out my mermaid. Where is the mermaid? There she is. I love this too. I got this at the dollar store. And since I've put them in this clear container, it's so much easier for me to find the one I want. Before I had a, a narrow mouth jar. And so every time I would need one, I kept pulling out extras. They would fly everywhere. So this is so much better. So I'll miss the prices at the Dollar Tree if they go up again. <laughs> I won't like it too much. Okay, that looks cool. All right, so we got a little bit of the teal. I think I'm going to go ahead and grab the seedless preserves. Yep, and we'll do a little bit of that. Okay. And I think I'm going to stamp. Let's see, I've got um, I've got the corner roses stamps. So what I'm going to do is I've got another piece of paper here. I don't want to stamp on this paper up here, so I'm masking it. And I'm going to get out my ink pad here. Move that over. I'm going to use the corner roses and stamp. I think I'll even kind of stamp over the acetate because it's permanent ink. And as long as I let it dry before I touch it, um, it will not smear. I'm just kind of filling in. Woo. Maybe I'll do a leaf there. Now, how does that look? I think one more thing I need to do is I have a, I haven't put it on my website yet because I'm not really sure that y'all would want it. <laughs> I have this crazy text stamp that I made. Um, I don't know what it says. I have not a clue. You can't really even read it. It's just, I don't know, just something text wise that you can kind of make out that there's text, but you have no idea what it is. There. I might do one more spot. Right about there. Okay. Big, big winner. It probably still looks like it's a whole another piece of paper. I don't know. We'll see. Do I want to do this? 
Let's um, wind it up with the edge. And I think, you know, since I'm covering this the way that I am. Oh, I made it smear. Dang it. I was rubbing my hands over it. <laughs> I'm thinking that maybe I'll make another pocket on the envelope. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to find where the edge is. Okay, so I'm going to cut this piece to be half an inch. I don't, I don't need much to fold over there. Yeah. And the idea is that I can glue this onto here and then there'll be another pocket back here. Does that make sense? Because I'm going to cut this way and that'll give me a pocket in both places. Now, do I want to cut, I guess I can cut the top off. That'll open that up and then this one will be open. So I'll have an opening from here in both places. But what I could do is make this a pocket that goes this way here. Okay, so I'm not going to glue this down yet. I'm working it out. I'm working it out. Okay, so that covers the whole thing. So if I cut this down, I'm going to use where it just so happens to be a seam. So that kind of splits that up a little bit. I'm not really worried about the height of it. All right, so now I have this envelope that if I do this right, I'm going to glue this part shut and I'm going to glue this to where it's a pocket that goes this way in here. I think that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, so I need to put glue under here. Have I lost y'all? <laughs> Uh, okay, so if I do this right, I want this to be glued across the top so that becomes a pocket here and then there's a pocket here. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to glue right here and I'm going to glue right here and press that together. All right, now get my distress thing and go around the edges. And then I've got this piece that I haven't done anything with, but it has a pocket here. And what I could do with this piece is just glue it down and glue another piece across the front here. I don't know. I may do that. Let's see. All right, so there's a pocket here and there's a pocket here. Does that make sense? Just going around the edges here. All right, so we need to put something in the pockets, right? Okay, I'm glad you're enjoying my process because I'm just doing this by the seat of my pants, y'all. <laughs> That's not what I wanted. Ah, look at that. Or do we want that one? I think I'm going to make a journal card out of this. And maybe I'll find another 
that I can make out of it. All right, so do I want this to be the one that pops out the side or the one that goes behind the paper? I think, let's see here, what do we got? We make this, if we make it four inches wide, that should allow me to be able to use it either way. So what I'm gonna do is show you this is coming from the top in to the pocket. So you don't really see where I messed it up too much. I could probably clean that with some alcohol or what I may do is just plant something right over the top of that. I think that looks good. I could have potentially enough to make a journal card that comes out this way too. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and cut it to be a little bit taller at the top, right? So this was six inches tall. So if I made that seven inches tall, it gives us about a one inch across the top. Sorry, I'm not in camera. You like that? The ring goes in the pockets. All right, so that goes there. Now what I could do is attach this to another piece of paper so there's more than one that goes in here. But I don't know that I want that to be sticking out the side pocket. What do you think? Does that need to be coming out this way? I have a different paper. It's not as deep. It's narrow. Narrow. I do have some of these that if I cut it, I could back it with a piece of other paper and then just have that sticking out the envelope there. Let's get a different one. I think this one. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I think that this will fit in here. No, I need to make it narrower, but I think I want to, I'm just gonna cut it right here with this even. And then I think I just need to cut it down just a smidge. So I'm just gonna make it five and three quarters of an inch. Oh, and that worked out. That actually was blank on that side. I had put some blank paper on this side. So then if I put this where it comes out of here, oh, I need to make it a little bit narrower. Yeah, let's make that a little bit narrower. It's not fitting into the skinny jeans today. If only we could just go to the paper trimmer, right? <laughs> yeah, the blue ones look better. Yeah, I think this, I think that works better. All right, so let's make a little tab to pull it out by. And thus using some more of my fabric. Do we want that? I could do a couple of layers. Just kind of layering them up. Not really thinking about much of anything. I've got a little piece of lace. You don't really see it, but you would know it was there. What else do I got? Oh, this is just a tiny, tiny, tiny scrap. Okay, I think what I'm going to do is just go over to the sewing machine and just stitch these just kind of as a stack on here. So they'll kind of stick out just a little bit. So we're going to go to the sewing machine. I'm going to add some Distress inks to that outside edge. I think I'll go ahead and round the corners. And then this was just, like I said, where I had taken all my scraps 
and collage them onto a bigger piece of paper, kind of like a master board, um, collage paper. Um, Nick the booksmith calls it Franken pages when you just take all those scraps and attach them to each other and make a new piece of paper out of it. I've been doing stuff like this forever, way before I was into doing the junk journals. <laughs> okay, I kind of like that. So if I take this and just quickly stitch it right there on that edge, okay? Take care. Thanks for coming in. Okay, so I'm going to come over here. Did I make it? Yes. And we've got lots of layers, so I'm just going to do a quick zigzag for all of it. So it's just, you know, all the layers are right there. Can you fluff them up? <coughs> fluff them up, them up. <laughs> I don't know, making stuff up. Now we can talk about Robin and Julie. Did they leave us? Okay, I like that. So if this was in here, the fabric will be sticking out. Okay. And then we can do something with the pink here. I'm going to go ahead and round the corners a bit. It's not very thick cardstock. It's cardstock, but it could have done with gluing multiples together. But I think for this, it's fine because we are adding so many layers. Right, let's move that over here for a moment. Okay. So now, this is going to go up here. Do we want to add my stuck? Okay. It was hanging up on me. Okay, that goes down in there. We could add a little piece of fabric up there. got this pink and what else oh I found a little tiny piece of cheesecloth oh and this little gold I think I think we've got it we'll just kind of layer all of these right across the top here all right so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to kind of make a ruffle with that pink. And yes, it may not go perfectly with this, but isn't that what it's, a being eclectic is all about? Is just doing what you find. And, and if a lot of times you do what you love. And this pink is actually the exact same color. I know. It's crazy. All right. So then we'll put a couple of dots here. Kind of stick that down. I'm kind of liking how that is coming out. I think I want to look for some thread here. I've got, what is this? This is some purples. Whenever I um, rip the fabric and you kind of get these little pieces that um, ravel, unravel, I save those. <laughs> I've got a drawer full here. I'll show you. I don't have the full. It's not completely full, but I kind of save those. I've got them all kind of tucked in here and I'll go through them every once in a while and use them. And I found them again the other day. So I thought, I need to use those. All right. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go over the sewing machine and I'm just going to stitch right across there and look how pretty that looks. I know it's all, it's a little bit muted. I think I could put one more thing. Let's see. I put some white. I have a tiny different. Oh, I don't think I want that. 
Oh, I've got a little piece of lace. All right, just a little snippet of it right there. There we go. Okay, I found something. I found something. We got it going on. All right, we're going to do this, right? All right, y'all still with me? All right, so I'm going to sew down all the layers. There we go. And then I can kind of fluff them back up. That looks cool. I think that turned out really cool. All right. So then this guy can go right there. And then we need to just add something here to kind of cover up where I smeared. So I've got butterflies. Do we want to do like a pink butterfly? I've got a bigger, here's a teal butterfly. Maybe the teal because we got the pink paper. And then let's look at, oh, here we go. How about collect beautiful moments right across there? Does that work? I think it does. So again, what I could do is I could make this into a hinged element. And I think that's what I'll do. I'm going to go ahead and get some supplies to do that. Okay. Is this one big enough? Hey, I got lucky. That's the, that's the size I need. And I think... I can get away with folding this in half and it would be what you see on both sides. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to take this piece of paper and fold it in half and line it up as best I can here. Come on. Okay. I'll use my bone folder. I'm making a hinge. So I'm going to glue this together. Doo, doo, doo. All right. So now I've got a stronger piece of paper and a strip. Okay. Give that a moment to dry. And what I'm going to do is fold this in half and glue a portion of it to this envelope back. And when I'm ready to glue it in my page, then it will hinge back and forth. Does that make sense? How I'm going to do that? In fact, what I might do is sometimes I'll even just glue it down and then manually fold it over. But I find that I prefer that I fold it in half beforehand. So I'm just going to put a paper clip on that because I don't want to try to fold it when the glue is wet. It acts weird. It kind of ripples and whatnot. So that way I've got it. So there is one pocket where we can have something going this way and that way. What we didn't do is put an envelope in here, right? So let's look at my envelopes. What if we did, this one's kind of bigger. Oh, how about this pink one? So if I put this in here where it's kind of sticking out. No, that's not going to work. Okay. That's not going to work. But what I could do is make another pocket on the back since this is going to be a flip out. Yep. Yep. All right. Another pocket on the back. Don't you think we're not done with that one yet? <laughs> what I could do is if I make this pocket go that way 
I can make this have an opening. You want to go that way? An opening going this way and a pocket going that way. Yeah? Going this way and that way. So, in theory, I don't need to glue this independently because I want that to be a pocket. So I'm just going to fold this over the top and glue that down. So I'll have a finished edge here and I have a pocket there that's finished. All right, so I'm going to glue this in place. I have to think about these things sometimes uh, when I'm doing it on the fly. If I've got it going in the right orientation, is it going to achieve what I want it to do? <laughs> So my thought was I would adhere this down onto the page after I go around the edges with some distress inks. Then I'm going to have a pocket, if I can get it open now, here that I can put something in. So for example, if I were to put this envelope in here and have it on here, okay? And then I have a pocket that can be accessed up here. So first thing I'm gonna do now is I want this to go right here on this side and then I'm going to put this over the top of it so I need to add some distress inks all the way around my pieces before I start adhering things down you like the frou-frou at the top thank you Robin frou-frou at the top so I'm just going to go this way So that's going to go over here and I'll glue this portion down as a pocket coming from the top. But I want this here. So first, I think I'm going to do is I'll just um, score in the middle. So this is roughly an inch and a quarter. So if I kind of put it between, is that right? Inch? No, that is not right. That's half an inch. There we go. That's what I needed. I almost did that wrong, y'all. So I'm just kind of gently scoring this. What I'll do is I'll fold it. Sometimes it doesn't go straight. Now I'll go around all the edges. Hey, Range! Hello, hello! Hey, Safina! So glad you're here! Yay! I'm glad you could stop by. How are you? I hope you are well. Life's treating you good. All right, so I'm just going around the whole piece. And I already did that one. Okay, so we'll put this away. So my thought is, I want to glue this on here where it's even with the edge, and then when it gets glued into my journal, then this will flip back and forth. It can be a hinge. So this is a hinged page, and this is painted paper. So I'm gonna get out the Fabri-Tac, and we're gonna glue this down. Usually the acrylic paint doesn't really like to be glued with the leans. That's why I'm using it. The beacon. Alright, so I need it to go this way. Yeah, okay. So I'm just making sure I got it right side up. And I'm just going to line it up with the edge here. Okay. Kind of position that. There we go. So when this is in our journal, we can flip it over and it'll be attached to our page. And then this is our pocket. And I think I'm going to position it where it's kind of overlapping the purple there. So we have a little bit more space this way. And I'm just going to glue it down on three sides. Okay. So I'm going to glue here. 
and here and here. I know it's covering up some of our work, but that's okay. I know it's there. I could have hinged this one as well, but I didn't want to do the double hinge. <laughs> okay, so in theory then, this will fit right in here. Okay, I'm liking it. This will be where it can be folded in. And I just need something to go in this pocket up here. I thought I saw some uh, uh, bookmarks. And actually, it's just a piece of uh, book cover. Uh, not cover. It's it's cardstock. Hard, ca not cardstock, but uh, yeah, heavy cardstock, I guess you could say. Because it's not chipboard. And I had cut it up because the pages were too thick the way that they were. All right, so do we want to leave that tall? You can kind of see it here. I think so. All right, so we're going to add some paper to this piece. I know I'm doing more than just making envelopes today. I hope y'all are liking my ideas. If we do... Uh, I've got this pretty purple. If that was kind of sticking out the top. And I could put one of my watercolor flowers on there. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. So, I'm going to glue a little piece of this down. Across the top here. Like so. Kind of smoothing that out get my scissors and we'll cut this off okay now we'll distress that and I think what I'll do is find one of my watercolor flowers and put that on the top and then we'll have the front of this piece as well as the back that you can journal upon and if you wanted you could even add a layer of paper on here and have like a notepad. You want me to do it as a notepad? Let me know if you want me to do this as a notepad. Because what I could do is just grab some papers that I have, random papers, and glue those down. I like, I like that. So this would be in here, sticking out. What do you think? And it might be too much. Oh, but I've got this one. I could break this up by putting that Im image on here. You think it needs that to be kind of not just all of that? I could make this a tuck spot so that if I had a different envelope, I could put it in there. That one's too big, though. <laughs> I have this little envelope. That might look kind of interesting, you know, with the brown to break up a little bit of the color. I think that's what I'm gonna do. You like my notepads? Okay. Let's get some more paper. All right, where did I see that? Oh, I've got this purple here. I just saw that. that we gotta use a piece of that. Oh, and I have, I have this. We're, we're gonna just get a collection out of my purple pad. Purple paper. have a blackberry dyed paper. It's not very practical, but it'd be good for someone that wants to cut it out and or tear it out of the notepad and use it somewhere else. I think I'm just going to grab my purple. My purple pile. I got my purple pile here. So what about this little piece of that? What else we have here? And that'll work. All right, that'll work. That's, that should be plenty, right? Oh, Hercules. 
I got my twist and my turn exercise done for the day. <laughs> you like the image on the pocket? Okay, thank you. All right, so let's trim these pieces. I'll get my pipe cutter. Put the glue back where it belongs. All right, so if I remember correctly, this is two inches wide, two inches wide. So I am going to cut two inches wide. And you know what? We'll just use all of it. Now, do I want to make it start underneath or down the bottom here? So where we have about that much. And then that would go over the top of it. Okay, that's what we're going to do. All right. So whatever this measurement is. Let's do five, four and four and three quarters, maybe a little bit less. All right, so we'll have these two pieces that'll go on here, and then I'm going to make this a two-inch strip, and we're going to make that four and a half inches because I think I can do something like that. So we're kind of getting some different scrappy bits. I'm going to cut this piece, see how wide it can be. It looks like one and three quarters of an inch. So I mean, I'm, I'm really getting rid of a lot of these scrappy pieces. I'm going to four and a quarter. And then that goes right there. And I saw this, that's why I wanted it. So let's make a shorter piece. Let's do um, four inches. And I believe that is also four inches. So if I cut this in half, I can get two. And I think, I think that's plenty. I think we've made a very nice, fluffy little, um, I've got a pile of papers here now, uh, notepad, right? I think we'll go ahead and do some distressing on it. Why not? It's what we do. <laughs> so I'm just going to add a little bit of distressing on this one. I didn't do it on the other one. And sometimes I like this look a lot better because it just kind of gives it that grungy look to it. Like it's been in the drawer for a while. And you're like, oh, I've got to use this. Or, oh, and that note was written on that paper that so-and-so gave me that was part of my gift or something, you know, kind of think about it that way. I'm just kind of go around all the edges and then we'll stack them all together. This will be cool. I think kind of do that. Let's do this one. I like this purpley. Oh yeah, so this side has got it's not very pretty, but I think it'll be fine. All right, so if I do that, maybe I want to do it this way, and then this one, and then this one, and then this one, and then this one again. Yeah, okay. I'm not gonna do a lot of them, I'm just kind of adding a little bit to it. That'll, that'll work. That'll work. That'll do. That'll do. That'll do. Let's glue this down. Okay. So I'm going to start with this one and put a drop of glue right here. Just enough to kind of help hold it in place. There we go. And I'll do another. I think I wanted this one. So I'll put that down. Okay, and then I want this pink. Okay, then I think I want the book page. And then this kind of purpley paper. 
And then this purpley paper. So you could tear these off and use them to add little notes somewhere else in the journal if you want. I hardly ever do stuff like this. It's been a while. But you could then flip through these and say, oh, I like that pattern. I'm going to use that over here and put something with it. Or you can write over it or collage over it. And apparently I didn't put enough glue down and I was flipping it already. <laughs> I put enough glue on there. Okay. I was going to go to the sewing machine, but I think I can get away with just gluing this on top. And I think I want to add something right behind. Maybe I've got a piece of fabric. I don't know. Is this a denim piece? I think what I might do is cut off the seam. And what if we were to make a little denim topper? I kind of like that. Yeah, maybe. And I have a little piece of lace. We could put that right here kind of covers up some of the denim, but if I glue it more as a circle behind, maybe, I don't know. I, 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 sometimes I sit here and I can contemplate and sometimes I can just bam, I'm done. There it is. <laughs> I have this little piece of purple fabric. What if we were just kind of glue a couple of pieces here? I think I'll glue it like that. <clears throat> okay. Oh, you did on regular copy paper and it worked? Yeah, yes to the denim range, says. All right, Safina. <laughs> I think so. And I think maybe some of the thread wad. Oh, I've got a piece of cheesecloth. All right, I am going to go to the sewing machine just because I want to stitch across this and then I'll glue this on top. You know, I can kind of position it a little better, but I know this isn't going anywhere, so that's why I want to stitch. Sewing lamb! Okay. I did not stitch through the paper. I'm above it. So that way, if someone really does want to try to pull off the whole thing, they can. Um, I don't think it needs the stitching on there. One ply is good. Okay. <laughs> I'm not trying to make you sad. I'm trying to use up the things I already have. All right, I think we'll put that kind of that direction so it kind of comes down. Poor Robin, making her sad. I am putting some glue on the piece that's going to be covered up just to help hold it all into place. Okay. Smooth it out. So then this can go in here. Cool. All right. And then I think I want to put this image here. And then I'll have this little envelope that'll go there. So we've got envelopes on envelopes in envelopes. <laughs> huh. We're making the envelopes happen. Now this is a bulky thing. This isn't something you want to do on every page in your journal, in my opinion. Unless that's just what you love. You love that bulky, layered up bits. And you don't actually write 
in the journal, you take all of these pieces out to write in it. So it doesn't really matter how thick or fluffy your page is. Okay, this is going to go in there. So if I were to get this back out, that was going to go on this page. And that one was going on this page, just for grins. Maybe I didn't want this to get covered up. So I hinge this so it can be in the journal. And look, it just kind of goes with the theme. And if I want, I can make this another layered pocket or something on this side. I think I like that. All right, so that one's going to go there. So I guess we might as well do something else over here, right? I have this pocket envelope. It could go over here, but I need some kind of container <laughs> to hold it. And since we're doing the theme of altered envelopes, let me see if I can find one. I thought I saw a smaller one. Where did it go? Where are you, my friend? Okay, so that one is not as small as I thought it was. But what I could do is make another larger envelope I don't know do I want to do that I didn't make one that I wanted to do which was I wanted a corner to come down all right so here's what we're gonna do I'm gonna get I've got another um, envelope I'm sure I'm gonna use one that isn't uh, Got a, doesn't have a window. No window. Well, where did they go? Oh, that's what I did. I had used it. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So I've got an envelope here with no window. I started to fold it, but I think what I want to do. Yeah. All right. So that's short enough. So I've got. An envelope that wasn't used, it's not any good. I am going to go ahead and glue it closed and then I'll cover the whole thing with paper. Okay. So I've got that portion. So do I want to do a collage? I mean, we've been doing that over here. We've done that with this piece as well as that piece. So I've got a couple of pieces of purple laying here. And that just so happens to be wide enough to cover that. It didn't go all the way to the top, but that's okay. I think I'm just gonna glue this down. And I know that, yeah, I closed the envelope completely, so good. I don't have to try to wrap paper around to the other side if I don't want to. Okay. So I just covered the front of that envelope. Bam, just like that. So what I'm going to do now is... I think I am going to put a different piece of paper here. Maybe this gel print. Let's see what that looks like. Is that too purpley? Maybe this one instead. That goes with that. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to trim off this excess here. Okay. And then I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to glue it across up here. Probably go. We're just covering the envelope. And then I'm going to do some creative folding. Not that creative. It's just folding. <laughs> 
put some glue here. This is a handmade paper that's been stamped kind of like with a batik type stamp. I've had it for a long time. All right, so now I'm going to cut this piece off. And we're going to add some distress inks. I've already got some, but I want some right there. I've got some right there. And we're going to do this side. All right. So now what I want to do is take this piece and fold it up and we're going to crease that. Alright, so now I have the potential to have a pocket right here. What I could also do is have a pocket up here by just gluing down these two sides. If I slice this edge, then I could have a pocket that goes this way and this way. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Is I'll just slice open the envelope just a smidge, just cutting a tiny sliver off. Okay. So now, whoopsie, I got a mess going on. This, in theory, if I cut it down far enough, I can't get my finger in there. Did I not cut it enough? I didn't cut it enough. <laughs> I still see part of the fold of the envelope. I guess I was just cutting off the outer paper. All right, let's make one more cut. Now it should open up. Now I can see it coming apart. I guess there was just a little bit of glue in it. Okay, there we go. Oh, I forgot because of the uh, the glue was the gummy part that you're supposed to lick to close it. It was still active. All right, I think I like that. I'm going to add some distress inks here. And let's glue here and we're going to glue here. And I'm just going to fold this over, add a paper clip on here too. Let's see, clippy, clippy. All right, so this is going to become a pocket that's glued down on the page that you have access to this portion and then you have this portion. If you want, you could also glue it down the sides here and have a pocket from the top. So that's what I'm thinking. So now what I need to do is add some other embellishments to it and then make something to go inside, right? I think I might be able to get away with putting this in the pocket. It may be a tight fit. I hate to put it all the same color, so maybe this pink one would be better. Or we'll make an envelope. That might be better. Okay, so I want something to go that way in both pockets and then from the top, right? We still have some of this um, cardstock, but I have a different one here. So what if we made a card that would load that way, and then we'll find something else to go from the top. I could use this one to go from the top, kind of keeping consistent with what we've been doing already today. Might as well. Using up what I have right here instead of cutting into new. All right, so I randomly folded this. I didn't think about measurements. Some people, that's important. This is almost seven and a half, seven inches tall. So this is under four inches. It's four and 
or three and three quarters of an inch. So I probably should make this three and a half inches. That would give us a little bit of wiggle room to come down. We said it was almost seven inches tall, so probably should make this eight inches. Would that work? So it sticks out about an inch, a little over an inch. We could make it shorter. If we make it seven and a half inches, that's about how far it would stick out the top there. I think I'm going to do that. Okay. Um, that created this card. I think I'm going to fold it in half. And that's going to go in this pocket, if I can get it to go. Yeah. And that'll go in that pocket. So Jen, I just need something to go here and something to go here. Okay. So let's cut this piece. It needs to be no wider than three. If I, do I want it to stick out? Probably should get it to stick out. So let's make it four inches, which will make it step stick out about that much. Okay, that'll work. Let's do that. Four inches. Okay. And then we're going to rotate this around. And I want it to fit inside. So if I do it at six inches, that would definitely fit. So what I could do is score this and fold it over. Because that would give us a nice little booklet in a sense sticking out there like that and then this piece would go back here right did I do that right oh I need to make um, gussets for it to, for my pocket but that would be that would be pretty cool this piece could also go in here I think I may have made it wide enough it's a tight fit I do that a few times. So that could go right there. And we just gonna add a little decoration on the front and then finish these two cards. <laughs> Lots of secret. Oh, when we still haven't done this one yet. Okay, so I still need to make a card or something to go in here. I think I have another one of those. Um pieces that I had to cut up. Let's see. No. It's, it's a bookmark, so I think I can trim it to fit to go in there, and then that'll give me a base to start with. Alright, so this pocket in theory should go all the way so if we made this three let's just cut it at four inches to start with we can always cut it down it's very difficult to add back to a piece of paper all right so if i made this let's see if this works i think it should about an inch and three quarters i think is what i did and then if I can find the opening, where is it? There it is. This will go here. And that fits all the way in. That looks cool. All right, so let's finish off these pieces. I think we make this one look like a tag. Yeah. Um, I'm going to punch so I can put some fabric in there. So 
So I'll punch it there. And I think I want to cut off the corners. So sometimes I have a little card that I use that I've cut. I think, I think that size will work. And then like that. All right, so now we got that piece. So let's go around those with Distress Inks and then I'll pick a piece of fabric and we'll put this all together. Yeah, paper makes a difference, doesn't it? Okay. Okay. So let's go around this piece. And I haven't really decorated it because I use some scrapbook paper. Now, if you don't have these papers, I think I have shown enough of you that you can make your own pretty papers with so many things, napkins, book pages, watercolor paints, rubber stamps, whatever you can find. Okay. You survived Creativation in Bourbon Street. Whoop, whoop. Well, good for you. Good for you. I should have gone this year, but I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. I may have to think about it in the future if something I want to do. I haven't done it in so long. Okay. I went around this one. Okay, that looks good. All right, so let's let's pick some fabric. So in theory, this piece is going to go in our side pocket here. Okay. Oh, and I didn't distress this piece, so I have to do that. And then this piece will go behind. I have to add the tabs so that I can have the full pocket width. And then we're going to round the corners of this little nugget. And let's add some distress inks to that piece. And you could even add paper to this and let it be a little mini journal. Do I have time? I might have time. I see some really outrageous colors of paper over here that I could use. <laughs> What if I were to put these as pages inside of here? So you get, yep, let's do that. Okay. Get my paper cutter. And what is this measurement? It is, so if we did it at three and a quarter. I think I have a stapler here. If I do this right, I should be able to take this piece. It's going to go in here. And then I would staple this on the line. Let me add some more. Okay. You stay put right where I want you. And we'll line that up. Look at there. I just made a quick little notepad that can go right here. We could add some decoration to the front of that. I saw some of Norella's images today, and I'm wondering just because we have so much of this print already, what if we were to cut a piece of this? And put that on top with a little bit of that pink showing out. And then we were not only seeing that pattern. I think that's what I'm going to do. Okay. So if I made this roughly a little less than two inches wide. Which I think is okay to cut it down. Okay. And then this way was 
three and a half, so let's make it almost three. Now let's see how that looks. You kind of see that? It kind of gives it a neat pattern. You like it? You love it? You want more of it? All right, let's add some Distress Inks. And we're going to glue it. Just glue it down. Glue it. Glue it down. Okay. How's that? We get all these colorful flowers. Okay, so now I need to put some fabric on there. That's going We got the rain coming down. I hear it. It's coming down hard. So I need a piece long enough. I haven't used this one tonight, and I think now it actually fits my needs. Oh, I'm going to cut it. Oh, what I should have done was use this, but it is so thick. Oh, I can use it. Okay, okay. Let's see if I can do it. Let's see if I can make it happen. All right, so I got that piece of the denim that I cut off, and I have a piece of fabric. So I'm just kind of centering them, and then I'll, I think I want them offset just a little bit, not, not perfectly across, and then I'm just going to stitch across here, okay? April flowers bring May flowers. April showers bring May flowers. Sorry, I don't know why I said flowers and flowers. More flowers. Look at that. Isn't that cool? All right, so let's go back over here. Yeah, if, it, if I drop out, it's a storm. Woo, there goes the thunder. All right, let's hurry up. <laughs> oh, I was going to stamp on here, but I think you guys get the gist of it. That's cool. So that'll stick in there. This will go on the page, and you can put it in the middle. You can put it closer to the edge so this sticks out if you want. That looks fun, doesn't it? I don't know. I, I thought so. Let's put something here. And I'm kind of enjoying using these little watercolor flowers that I made. Here's one. Okay, good. I've got these. So I've got one where I had kind of doodled over it. And then this one doesn't have the doodle. And I'm kind of thinking maybe that one. Or do I want to change it up completely? This don't have the leaves. I guess I could get my watercolors out, but this one but doesn't have any leaves on it but I could come back and watercolor those later what do you think <laughs> looks fun 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 Got this lighter purple I don't know I'm kind of leaning towards this one you heard the thunder, thunder, lightning. Let's see what we can find, what we can use in our junk journal today. I stamped some words a while ago. No, I just have to find them. Here we go. This is what I wanted. I've got a big mess going on. <laughs> wrap it up. Wrap it up. Okay, we got journal. 
And then I was thinking, it may be too much though, with the dragonfly. If I can get one out. Something like that, and I don't need the green flowers. Maybe another little piece of fabric, especially behind the word journal. I've got this, uh, I've got this blue. Let's see here. All right, y'all get in on the raffle. Sorry, I, I'm so out of it today. Y'all get in on the raffle. And uh, I have a little journal. Do we have time today? I have a little journal that I could raffle off today because we've had so many of y'all that have donated. Do you want me to stay and do that? Or do you want me to wrap it up, Linda? And quit. <laughs> After I glue this down. Hey. <sighs> Raffle. Y'all join the raffle. Do you want an angle? I think kind of like that. This is going to be one fluffy journal if I put it all in one journal. Okay, that. Or do we want to come over here? Let's put it there. Okay like that. Raffle the journal! You did it again! Alright, well y'all went in on the raffle. Get on. We're going to do one right now of the 200 junk bucks and then we're going to do one more and get off here. Alright, let's pick the winner. The winner of 200 junk bucks! Da, 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 da. I'm waiting for a second. Alright, Suzanne Roberts, congratulations! Alright, let's reset that. Yes. Let's go here. One um, small journal. Open. So this is a journal that I made a while a couple of weeks ago. Um, I was sitting here and I had all these scraps and bits and pieces and I wanted to make something out of it. If I remember correctly, the inside was a package or something. I'm not positive. And I covered it with a gel print. I think I need to do some gel printing session. I, I keep seeing this gold paint. I need to go buy some more gold paint. And then I want to do a whole bunch of stencils where there's a gold accent because I just love it. Anyhow, um, this was a mixed media page I made here. I added some gold around the edge to get that to pop and also to tie in with the cover. This is one of my rubber stamps that I have watercolored and another here. And of course the word journal. And then on the inside, this was some fancy handmade paper that had flowers on it. But when I went like this, the flowers just fell off. So I thought, well, it'd be good for the inside. You could write. This is using the ribbon rose stencil and I just turned it up, made a pocket. This is just a piece of uh, copy paper. Um, this was some of Norella's uh, Amarillo Rose pieces on some music. And here is just a random card that I had left over from one of my projects. And I thought, well, I'll just stick that in the pocket. Another little stenciled over a scrap of paper. Stenciled uh, Tattered Angels. One of those tear-off notepad papers. Some more of the Amarillo Rose on a piece of book page. This is one of Norella's little dragonflies that I've mounted onto another piece of uh, cardstock, so it's a thicker piece. Piece of music, rubber stamped image, stenciled uh, blackberry dyed paper, a gel print, and this was just kind of a little collage of things. I put the little bunnies because I saw the nest and I thought they went well together. Perfect for spring. Uh, I've got a couple little charms here. One's an owl, the other's like a little daisy. And then that's my uh, one of my watercolors. I didn't put any words, I guess, on this one. I just did the whatever I found on my desk. I need to make more of these. Oh, I just bent the card. Don't do that. All right. Um, another image. I don't know where this came from. 
<laughs> it was just in my stash. So I don't know where that one's from. Uh, the other side of the paper. This is from the Musical Botanica uh, journal kit. I had some little mini papers left over. So I thought since it was the sheet music and had music on it, I'll just stick it in there. Oh, that's from the Amarillo Rose. I know that's from the Amarillo Rose. This other one might also be from the Amarillo Rose. Yes, I think it is. <laughs> uh, this is just some scrapbook uh, card stock little cards. And then there's that side. All right, so we're going to pick a winner for that. Y'all enter the raffle. Let's go back and look at what I made today. So I'm just kind of moving a couple things out of the way. Put that back over here. Go over there. Get out of my way, please, dear. Did y'all like today's session? Do you want me to do again? I could do it again next week if you want. Uh, where I continue on some of the envelope usage. If that's something you're interested in, do speak up in the chat. All right, so we made this one at the beginning where I covered the whole envelope with book paper. And my thinking is I'm going to put this in here as a hinge. So I will get a couple of pieces of some book pages that are the right size and distress them. And that will become my hinge. I may even add uh, another pocket to the back side of this one. And then I made this little flip out. Why is my computer not in the right spot? There we go. Uh, you love this kind of, okay, well, thank you, Margie. So this has kind of got a lot of different, just papers that I had in my stash and I was just using them up. Um, I already had that card somewhat prepared. So this is going to have a pocket at the top here. If I can get it in the pocket. And what you could do is, uh, if you wanted to glue this down, you could still glue it down and have it to be a, a side pocket. But I'm going to make this a flip. And then on the other side of here, that was where I cut off part of that pocket. And it was just the right size that I'll be able to glue this down. I am going to add gussets to this so that I can glue this down and have a multi-layered pocket there. And then in here, we took the envelope and I collaged paper over it and cut it. And then we decided to put in the pocket here a journal card. So there is a pocket here that this can go in. There is a pocket here that has a journal card that I just used some of my scraps of paper and it's glued to another piece of paper. And then this is going to be hinged on the page, so you'll flip it over. And when you flip it over, there is a pocket here that's a envelope that was in it. Then there's a tuck spot here that has another envelope that I made earlier. And then right here is an envelope. And then we've got a little notepad of miscellaneous papers that kind of go with the theme and the color of this page. So that'll go over here. And then this one that we just finished, get all my pieces out of the way. If I were to do this one, I could make this a pocket that mounts directly on the page. So we've got this nice looking collage of colors, lots of color, lots and lots of color. All right, did y'all like that? Did y'all enter the raffle? Everybody enter the raffle if you want this journal. I think this is going to look good. I may end up actually getting three more pages and not putting them this fluffy together. I don't know. I may make a journal that that's all it is, is maybe like three to four pages just like this. And every page is a whole, you know, plethora of little pockets. Because if you go any thicker than that, that journal's going to be so fat. <laughs> All right, I'm going to clean my hands off. So, what do you want me to do next week? You want me to continue on using envelopes in creative ways? I can do that. If you want me to go to some uh, gel printing and mixed media, uh, we can do that as well. So, just let me know what you prefer. I'm trying to really use up 
a lot of this stuff that I have and I'm kind of enjoying this free form of creating and not necessarily uh, based off of a particular theme. I'm just using the things I have, the colors that I enjoy and seeing what comes of it. Yeah, it's raining now. All right, everybody in the raffle. I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I see Suzanne, Sherry, Connie, Rhonda, Julie, uh, Safina, uh, Jennifer, and Margie are in the raffle. I'll give you another minute. Fun fact, fat journal. Yep. Just do what makes you happy. All right. Well, I think I may continue on with this and make another uh, little elements like this because I think I have an idea for a journal I want to make and I don't want it to be super thick so maybe even if I just do uh, another page worth of these last call for the raffle because I didn't even use some of these other envelopes concepts yet I mean I, I need to do something with this one and I've got these that I've started so maybe I will use these ahead of time and decorate them and get them all ready for whatever my next layout's going to be. Okay, well, I hope y'all enjoyed this. I, again, uh, give me some feedback. Comment down below what you liked about today. Tell me a little bit about what you like. You know what I will do? I don't think I've ever uploaded the digital download of this page that I made where I rubber stamped all the pages and, and uh, watercolored them. So I know that there are a digital, but I don't think I've made it a product. So if you comment in the uh, field down below and say, um, I want the digital, whether you want it or not, but if you say, I want the digital, then I will give you a link, a special link that you can go to to download it for free. Okay, how's that? All right, so let's see. Um, we're going to continue on next week and see what else we can do with envelopes. I'm, I enjoyed today. I got into it, I think, a little bit. It took me a little bit to kind of come up with what I wanted to do today, and I think I've come up with some creative things. Hope you liked it. All right, let's pick a winner. The winner of the journal today is da, 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 Sherry Kazmar. Uh, Sherry, do I have your address? Because I don't think I've talked to you in a while. If I don't, please go over to my website at lindaisrael.com and fill out the contact me form after you've created a user account and put your mailing address. If you have issues with that, definitely tell me in the contact form and say, hey, Linda, I've added my um, member name information to your website. I'm so-and-so. I won during the live stream. And that way I've got that all connected so I can get it in the mail. Okay. <laughs> I want the digital whether you want it or not. <laughs> well, definitely go in down below in the description under the comments of this after the live is over and say, I want the digital. And then I will make sure to get that link to you. I've already got them scanned in. I just need to make a product on my website and then you guys can download those. Okay. Alrighty. What else? Um, Thank you all so very much for hanging out with me. Thank you for the donations that were given today. I'm hoping I can figure out how to fix Junkie Joe and, and the dancing sheep. I tried it today for a couple hours. I kept messing with it. I did it, manage to change my view because I wanted it to be a little bit more zoomed in. And I hope that y'all liked that today. Okay, perfect, Sherry. Yeah, contact me, okay? Um, thank you so much again. Uh, do something kind, do something fun for someone else in your life, whether it be just give them a text or a call or send them a card or ask them to go coffee, something to that effect. Uh, kind of reach out to someone, do something kind for someone else out there. Y'all have an amazing week. Do something fun and creative and let's come back next week and you tell me all about it, okay? All right, y'all have an amazing day. Lots of love to each and every one of you. Bye, everybody.